Hi everyone, uh, Patek here. Welcome to episode uh, 52 of SFF Spotlight. I know that it has been two weeks. That's longer than usual since I posted my previous episode of SFF Spotlight, but I want to make sure that I have enough substantial content and also topic to talk about. And now I think I have enough of them. I have about 20 topics uh, to cover today. And of course, just like always, uh, if this is the first time you're watching SFF Spotlight, uh, this is a series of videos on my YouTube channel where I talk about new cover reveals, new book news, new special edition, new Kickstarter campaign, and also a new noteworthy release in the adult science fiction and fantasy genre. Let's start from new book news first. Uh, the first one is regarding The Blood of the Old Kings by Sung Il Kim. So I have actually talked about this uh, in one of my uh, previous episodes of SFF Spotlight, but I am including Blood of the Old Kings again to inform you that the UK publisher behind this book will be Orbit Books. And yeah, it will feature the same cover art, uh, the one that is illustrated by Dominic Mayer. I think the cover art looks absolutely gorgeous and I'm happy that uh, Dominic Mayer is the one doing the illustration for uh, Blood of the Old Kings and also that Orbit Books has decided uh, to implement the same cover art. I was actually uh, scared that they're going to use a different cover art and then the cover art will be inferior compared to the one that is displayed on the one published by Tor Books. Apparently not and I am happy for it. And yeah, I am looking forward to finding out the tale regarding uh, this necromancy and also Seven Eye Dragons. And Blood of the Old Kings is among one of my most anticipated release. I think this is an epic fantasy debut by the author as well and it will be translated by Anton Her. And then for the next topic, this is still uh, related to Orbit Books. This is about uh, the second book in the first Born trilogy by Gareth Hunderhan, uh, The Sword Unbound. And the cover art has been revealed once again, just like the first book, The Sword Defiant. The cover art is done by Thea Dumitriou, and this one will be released in the month of May. I haven't read the first book yet, The Sword Defiant, but I'm a fan of Gareth Hunderhan's book from his work on the Black Iron Legacy. And that is not a trilogy, even though I have mentioned that the Black Iron uh, Legacy would be a trilogy, but it is not. There will be more books in the series. I have no, I have no idea how many books uh, will be in the series, probably five books long. But for now, I think Gareth Hunderhan is focusing on the first Braun trilogy. And yeah, I look forward to reading the first book uh, eventually. I have no idea when, hopefully as soon uh, as I can. So that's it for the category of new book news. Now let's move on to TV show adaptation stuff. But for the first one, uh, this is still related again to Orbit Books uh, catalog. So this one is for How to Become the Dark Lord or Die Trying by Django Wexler. And just like the Sword Unbound, this one, this book will be released in the month of May. But the news in today's episode of SFF Spotlight will be regarding the already confirmed TV show adaptation of this book. How to Become the Dark Lord and Die Trying by Django Wexler, the adaptation of it is already in the works at Legendary Television. And Adam Wingard, the director behind Godzilla vs Kong, and also the upcoming Godzilla x Kong The New Empire, is developing it. Just like always, every time a book is option for an adaptation, we can all, we can all only keep our fingers crossed that it will uh, actually happen. I mean, for example, uh, Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. I have heard about uh, a confirmation of the TV show adaptation since 2016, and it is only now, it is only this year that it is happening. So that's eight years since the confirmation of Dark Matter. But I hope everything will go well for this adaptation of How to Become the Dark Lord and Die Trying. I have read plenty of books by Django, Django Wexler, I think six books now, and I have enjoyed uh, pretty much all of them. And on with the next topic, this is regarding A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms, The H Knight. There is not uh, too many news on this one, only that I think it is confirmed that the first episode might premiere in late 2025. So yeah, it is still quite a while before this one premieres. As for the book, I really enjoyed reading A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms. I think it is a great prequel novel to A Song of Ice and Fire, to the main books in A Song of Ice and Fire. If you haven't read that yet, I highly recommend it. And then finally, for the last one, before we move on to talk about a Kickstarter campaign and also special editions, this is regarding the manga Naruto. Naruto by Masashi Kishimoto, just after I started doing another reread of the manga. And then apparently, it has been confirmed there's a live, live adaptation of it happening being directed by the director behind uh, Shang-Chi. But honestly speaking, when it comes to the matter of manga or anime adaptation, I pretty much have close to zero faith that it will work 
uh, well. I'm sorry, but that's just the way I work with a TV show adaptation of a manga. I think most of the time, well, pretty much all the time, the manga or the anime will always be better than the live show adaptation. And now we move on to the next section of SFF Spotlight. Time to talk about Kickstarter campaigns. And guess what? Today, I have only two Kickstarter campaigns to Spotlight. I know, that sounds like a miracle, right? Especially because every time I talk about Kickstarter campaigns, there is always so many of them to Spotlight. But in today's episode, I have only two to Spotlight. And the first one is... Pretty much just an apology uh, from me regarding Dawn of the Void by Phil Tucker. So I have mentioned in my previous two episodes that Dawn of the Void Omnibus Edition is coming in the 15th of February, but I don't know, I haven't heard back from Phil Tucker about this and until now, the Kickstarter campaign hasn't gone live yet and I've I have been getting messages about it and I'm sorry for that. I really don't know what's going on. I have messaged Phil Tucker about it, but for now, uh, the Kickstarter campaign uh, is still, still not live yet. Hopefully, that will uh, launch uh, next week. Who knows, maybe that, that might happen. I am going to assume that Phil Tucker is currently busy handling all the images and also the graphic design behind the website for the Kickstarter campaign of Dawn of the Void Deluxe Omnibus Edition. But moving on to the next and last Kickstarter campaign to spotlight today, this is about uh, Seeds of War and also Thorns of War by Joao F. Silva. And yeah, there will be a hardcover deluxe edition of the Smokesmith series, a great indie fantasy series. Well, I haven't read it, but I heard so many great things about it, and I would try my best to read this series uh, within this year. But yeah, there will be a Kickstarter campaign of the Deluxe Hardcover Edition coming in the 1st of March. The Kickstarter campaign will go live on the 1st of March, and the books will contain interior illustrations by plenty of artists such as uh, this one. The cover to the Tons of War though is again done by Miblart and then for those of you who don't know this is a series with smoke magic, meddling gods and unique mystical beasts. I look forward to the launch of the Kickstarter campaign and of course more importantly I look forward to reading this series for the first time. And then that's it. That's it for the topic of Kickstarter campaigns. But for the next two, they are still kind of related to uh, Kickstarter campaign products. So for the next one, this is about uh, the Sword of Kaigen, yeah. The Sword of Kaigen by M.L. Wang is getting a new hardcover edition from Raidmark. There will be more details to come, but I think Raidmark has confirmed this will be a completely different kind of edition uh, compared to the Sword of Kaigen limited edition that you can see over here that I own. As a huge fan of the Sword of Kaigen, I am obviously excited about a new special edition of the Sword of Kaigen. And this time, uh, the artist will be Tom Gillison, an absolutely incredible artist. I highly recommend you to check out his portfolio and then you can probably imagine the kind of amazing artwork that will appear on the front cover of the Sword of Kagen. I am excited about it and once I hear more details about this, I will let you know. I know that many of you uh, have been contacting me about news regarding Sword of Kagen hardcover or maybe will there be another reprint of the limited edition but i think this is what Raidmark has to offer i'm sure that Raidmark kept getting even more questions compared to me regarding a new stock of their edition of the sword of kaigen and after that this is again for another edition that was out of print but this is for the threat light trilogy omnibus edition by zach arga if you missed out on this beautiful deluxe hardcover edition of the entire threat light trilogy there is still a chance for you to get it. And to get that, you must subscribe to Zach Argyle's newsletter. And then you will hear the details on when it will go live. But in total, there will only be about 100 copies. The price of the omnibus with the slipcase included in total will be more expensive than the Kickstarter price, understandably. In total, I think the price will be about 100 uh, US dollars. 105 US dollars plus shipping. But personally, I can definitely confirm that this edition is worth uh, the money. I mean, it has practically everything that you want in a special edition. Acid-free paper, Smithsoon binding, full color interior illustrations, and custom chapter headers and papers and more. Highly recommended. And I'm in the middle of reading the trilogy right now using this beautiful edition. So yeah, if you missed out on it, make sure to subscribe to Zach Argyle's uh, newsletter and do not miss out on it. I think this is the last time you can acquire a copy of the chat light deluxe omnibus edition so that's another section about uh, kickstarter campaigns now let's move on to talk about special editions and i have a lot of things to spotlight 
uh, today on this topic. Let's start with the new interior artworks reveal of the Curious King edition of the fifth season by N.K. Jemisin. And yeah, this is again illustrated by John Anthony Di Giovanni. And I think this edition, uh, as Curious King himself said, is looking to be even better compared to their standard edition of the Blade itself, which is a very high praise. The Blade itself Curious King edition is currently the best special edition that I own. And to think Curious King is confident saying that the edition of the fifth season is even better than the Blade itself is quite mind-blowing to me. So I'm excited to see how it will all turn out. And then after that, this is about Jade City Subterranean Press edition. Uh, this one is a bit brief, but Subterranean Press has finally confirmed, and this is a great news for those of us who want to get a copy of Jade City, but Subterranean Press has confirmed there will be more than two interior illustrations inside Jade City. I think in total, on top of the new cover art and also new fully colored and papers, in total there will be another four interior illustrations at least. At, at least that's what I am assuming based on what I heard. But this is good news considering that there is a good chance that this book will be priced at 200 US dollars. To have a special limited edition of GHCT or the Green Bone Saga at that kind of price with only two interior illustrations would be a huge disservice uh, to the Green Bone Saga in my opinion because there are so many scenes that could be illustrated inside this trilogy. So yeah, this is great news for all of us who want to get a copy of Jade City Subterranean Press Edition, even though it will be a bloodbath trying to acquire a copy. And the next special edition I want to spotlight, this is about Chronicles of the Black Company by Glenn Cook, uh, published by Midworld Press. So Midworld Press recently revealed the cover art to the second book, The Shadows Linger, which in my opinion is the best book in the Chronicles of the Black Company. This one has a cover art and probably interior illustrations as well, by Didier Graffet, an absolutely amazing artist. Didier Graffet has done a lot of incredible fantasy and sci-fi artworks in foreign uh, editions, non-US or non-UK uh, cover art, and they are all just stunning, including the cover art to The Shadows Linger. Now, Midworld Press, uh, although they don't ship to my place, I do think their pricing is really good for a very high quality limited edition. I have been eyeing their edition of the Black Tongue Thief, but again, I cannot own it because they don't ship to my place. But based on what I've seen online, it seems like for $100 or $90, anti US dollars, it seems like their quality is almost or probably on par to Grim Oak Press uh, edition. So yeah, that is an incredible stuff at an affordable, relatively affordable price. And speaking of Grim Oak Press, the next few topics, all of them are related to Grim Oak Press. The first one, before I talk about what they announced for their second quarter catalog, which is insane, absolutely insane. But first, let's talk about this. Uh, the Desert Spear by Peter V. Brad, uh, with an illustration by Alan Williams. If you own a copy of the War Dead Man Grim Oak Press Edition, it is possible to buy the Desert Spear now. I think the cover art looks great, and Alan Williams' artwork looks dark and so fitting to the Demon Cycle series. But I have mixed feelings regarding the Demon Cycle, so I definitely well, I will be staying out from buying uh, this one. However, and this is moving on to the next topic, this is regarding what they have announced for their second quarter of the year 2024. And it is packed with a lot of great books. The first one is the one that I am anticipating a lot. And this is about Malice by John Gwynn. On the 10th of April, it will be possible to pre-order Malice by John Gwynn Grim Oak Press Edition. And I think the price will be 200 uh, US dollars. The cover art is done by Marcus Winnie, the cover artist behind the Blood Swan Saga by John Gwynn. So it is very likely that after the entire cover art of The Faithful and the Fallen, Grim Oak Press Edition is complete, it will match uh, the cover art to the Blood Swan Saga by John Gwynn. But the standard edition. But there is another exciting news about Grim Oak Press edition of Malice. So it is confirmed that it will contain 11 fully colored interior artworks. 11, that is an incredible number of interior illustrations fully colored uh, inside a book. And they will be illustrated by Sam White. As you can see here, you can see Young Corban and also Storm. I already feel fuzzy just looking at this interior illustrations. So yeah, 
I hope I can get a copy of this one. I mean, The Faithful and the Fallen is one of my favorite series of all time. And then after that, the second title is about Warrior by Terry Brooks. This one, the pre-order date is on the 8th of May and it will be illustrated by Lee Sin Yin. Great artist, but I haven't read anything by Terry Brooks yet, so this will most likely be an out uh, for me. And then after that, on the 22nd of May, it will be possible to pre-order the Grim Oak Press edition of Prince of the Blood by Raymond E. Fies. It will be illustrated by Don Mites and also Johnny Words. Again, I haven't read this, so probably will be an out for me, even though I am quite interested in getting a copy of their Grim Oak Press edition of the Grim Oak Press edition of the Rift War Empire trilogy with an illustration by Jenny Woods, but who knows when I will get that. And after Prince of the Blood, we have The White Dragon by Anne McCaffrey. And then finally, for the last title in the second quarter of 2024, Grim Oak Press edition, this is about the book of the Ancestor Omnibus edition. It will be illustrated by Francesca Resta, and this is the beautiful cover art. I think it is a stunning cover art. I am not sure what the price of this one will be. If I'm not mistaken, the price of the Omnibus Edition, the Grim Oak Press Omnibus Edition of The Broken Empire and also the Red Queen's War Trilogy, I think they were uh, $100 each. So I'm not sure whether it will be the same price again for Book of the Ancestor. Maybe it will have a little bit of a price increase, but it will be possible to pre-order this on the 19th of June. But I think uh, at the same time, Grim Oak Press is still not sure whether they will be launching the pre-order for Book of the Ancestor on this date, or maybe it will be for the single edition of Prince of Fool by Mark Lawrence with the cover art and also interior artwork by Jason Chan again. And Jason Chan, everything that he did for Mark Lawrence or everything that he illustrated, really, all of them always turned out so damn good, including this supposedly unfinished art of Prince of Fool. And you can actually vote uh, which which art you want as the cover art to, uh, for, their, for their single edition of Prince of the Fool. But yeah, I am sure there will be more details on their edition of Book of the Ancestor and also Prince of Fool closer to the release date. So yeah, that's a lot of exciting news from Grim Oak Press and they also announced that they will be doing their own edition of the Magician Trilogy by Lev Grossman. But that's it on the Grim Oak Press uh, section. Now let's talk about the Broken Binding before we move on to cover reveals and then and today's episode of SFF Spotlight. And let's start with the big one. I have been keeping this uh, in secret for many months now, and now it has finally been uh, revealed. This is regarding the, their subscription for the month of uh, April until the month of June. Their pick is The Gentleman Bastards by Scott Lynch. Yeah, exactly. The special edition of The Lies of Loch Lamora, and then The Red Seas and The Red Skies, and finally Republic of Thieves is coming. So if you are subscribed to The Broken Binding, well, you will be able to get them. And I am so looking forward uh, to finally upgrading my paperback edition to a hardcover edition. And hopefully this is a sign that Thorn of Amber Lane is finally coming up uh, soon. Maybe this year or maybe next year. I have no idea, but hopefully it is soon. I mean, Scott Lynch, after all, has mentioned that there are plenty of news coming from him regarding his works sooner than later. And then after that, this is still related to the Broken Binding. This is about the Midnight Edition of the Dandelion Dynasty by Ken Liu. So yeah, if you are interested in getting yourself a copy of the, well, it is pretty much the same edition as the one you can see here. It will be almost exactly the same as this edition, the Dandelion Dynasty edition of the Broken uh, by the Broken Binding. But the color will not be in teal, it will be in purple. And there will be more stock compared to this one because this one is limited to 300 copies. So yeah, the Midnight edition will contain more. So if you are interested, make sure to fill out the form that Broken Binding has prepared and then they can approximate how many copies they will prepare for their uh, buyers. And finally, the last special edition I want to spot out today, this is about the Dragon Rider by Taran Mataru and this is the Broken Binding edition. The cover art is designed by Holly McDonald and then the Broken Binding edition is not the only company doing a special edition of the Dragon Rider by Taran Mataru. 
Goldsboro is doing it and also Waterstone is uh, doing it as well. So yeah, a lot of companies are doing a special edition of the Dragon Rider. So if you are interested in getting yourself a special edition of it, then make sure to do some research first, uh, which one you want to get, or maybe you want to get them all. And speaking of dragons, let's move on to talk about some cover reveals because uh, the first one that I want to spotlight, the first cover reveal I want to spot today, this is for The Fall of the Giants by Gregory Contasis. And the cover art is done by Me Blood. And take a look at that. Isn't this such an epic cover art? And yeah, it features this, I don't know who, this knight fighting against this massive dragon. It kind of reminded me of the cover art to The Shadow of the Gods by John Gwynn. And I like it. I haven't read this series yet. This is a Greek-inspired fantasy series, and I hope I will like it by the time I read it. And unlike the first book in the series, this one, The Fall of the Giants, will contain one interior illustrations by Omer Burak Onal. And I think it looks beautiful. And after that, let's move on to the next one. This is about a new release by one of the most productive authors of all time, even more than Brandon Sanderson. Yes, I said that. This is about Pirate Abba. Again, Pirate Abba has revealed a new cover to the second book in the Singers of Terandria uh, series. This is the cover to Hansong, and the cover is done by Steven Sitton. I think it looks beautiful. I haven't read the series yet, I know that. This series do take place in the same world as The Wandering Inn, which I will start uh, within this year, hopefully in April or in May. But beyond that, I don't know anything else about this. I know that Pirate Abba, I think, has mentioned this is also a good starting point uh, to their work. And finally, the last cover reveal I want to spotlight today, this is for Titanica by Alex Robbins, an ancient Greek-inspired fantasy series. And the cover art is done by Felix Ortiz. If you are not familiar with the series, The Ruin Gods is an ancient Greek-inspired fantasy where human city-states are thrust into conflict with a whole host of different mythological creatures and eventually taking up the gods themselves. I did the cover reveal to this one, but I don't actually own the books, so no idea when I will get around to this. I still own another series by Alex Robbins that I need to start and finish uh, first. And finally, moving on to the last section of today's episode of SFF Spotlight. This is about noteworthy release, and I have one release to spotlight. This is about Demon's Rage by Ben Gelly and also David uh, Estes, or David Estes, the author behind uh, the popular Fate Mark series, which I still need to read as well, including Ben Gelly's books. I can't believe that I haven't, I haven't read anything by Ben Gelly yet. I hope that I can fix that uh, within this year. But the cover to this one, Demon, Demon's Rage, is again just like the first book, illustrated by Man Sik Young, and I think it looks uh, beautiful and fierce. Hopefully the book will be as good as the cover art. And that's pretty much it for today's episode of SFF Spot Art, but I want to mention uh, one thing. Consider this a bonus uh, a bonus news. This is about uh, Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree. I've been super excited about this upcoming uh, DLC, and you know, after watching the trailer, in the middle of watching the trailer, I was already so hyped, and I keep on watching uh, the new trailer and yeah this will be out on the 21st of June if you have played Elden Ring or from software games do let me know what you think about uh, the news regarding the DLC Shadow of the Earth 3 personally this is definitely my most anticipated game uh, this year and yeah now that's really it for today's episode of SFF Spotlight. Just like always, do let me know what you think about the news that I spotlighted in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye. Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me.